Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new video. So for this new series I've decided to go with a, a theme that it's uh, quite popular right now and not many people really know uh, too many informations about. So I'm talking about photogrammetry and photogrammetry in, is uh, recently getting more and more popular uh, especially for uh, game development and movie VFX and things like that and a lot of people probably have heard of photogrammetry but not many people know actually uh, how it's done so for this new series I thought uh, it would be interesting to uh, take a toy in this case this cute little uh, pink uh, dinosaur and uh, scan it, 3D scan it with photogrammetry and then uh, clean up the model and bring it into a real-time engine such as for example Unreal Engine or uh, Marmoset or uh, something like that. So uh, um, let's start it and um, I wanted to show you um, the images that I took with my camera so there's a couple of things that I want to point out so I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you uh, so this is the toy it's, uh, it's about uh, 30 centimeters uh, in length from, from the nose to the, the tip of the tail and um, so I, I've chosen to put it outside uh, and it was a cloudy kind of uh, covered cloudy day which is absolutely perfect because uh, you don't want to have uh, too much of harsh shadow on your model so you want uh, the light to be as diffuse as possible uh, of course uh, if you have access to studio light uh, you can set up the perfect uh, environment with uh, nice and diffuse lights uh, all over the place but in my case uh, I don't have any so I've decided to uh, just use what I have so I just brought it outside put it on top of a box and uh, take advantage of the cloudy day and I took a bunch of pictures so I'm gonna quickly show you uh, the pictures that I took so this is the first one and then I started to move around and take uh, the its entirety the picture of the dinosaur from all over the place so I keep moving uh, like this like this and I keep rotating around uh, to cover the entire uh, 360 and the entirety of the dinosaurs and then after that I started taking a bunch of pictures of the details so I went close closer to the head I went closer to the body closer to the tail closer to the feet and I started um, taking different angles so for example uh, I this is from below and again I moved below and took a picture like here and then someone up here and here and then I came back on the other side of the head and then tried to get a little bit of detail um, and then I continue this side and this side of the head tried to get a as much angles different angles that I that I possibly could simply just rotating around the dinosaur and taking all these pictures of uh, all these details and again this is uh, the belly and let's keep rotating around there isn't uh, a specific rule for this the overall rule is just try to take as many angles uh, as you can and not just uh, from one height but also from the top and from the bottom so again 
I move on the top here and I'm again I started taking pictures of it uh, all around now as you can see um, in these pictures uh, the sun came out a little bit so it got a little bit uh, stronger shadows uh, but uh, overall uh, it was a fairly diffuse uh, light and uh, kept taking all these pictures like here and here um, in entirety I took uh, 100 pictures uh, I think 100 pictures is a decent number um, definitely I would recommend to take at least 20 or 30 pictures of your subject uh, but don't get crazy like if you have uh, for example a thousand pictures that's just gonna slow down the uh, calculation process and it's not really gonna give uh, doesn't really necessarily mean that you're gonna get better quality scan so I recommend between 50 and 100 pictures um, to uh, tr and try to cover as many angles as you can now a thing that I want to point out um, let's see pictures like this for example these are really not good and as you can see like the uh, the hands are on focus but everything else is out of focus now these kind of pictures should be avoided as much as possible uh, as well as here like the body um, it's in focus but the hands and the, f the head is out of focus and uh, I did this uh, kind of on purpose uh, because um, if you if you take pictures with a longer exposure obviously you're gonna get a nice uh, um, always all on focus pictures and the quicker your uh, shutter speed is and the, uh, the the bigger the blur is gonna be so this is one of the worst as you can see only this part of the image is on focus and everything else is completely out of focus this picture is uh, pretty much useless if uh, just probably just for this part here um, so uh, try to get uh, the entire subject in focus at, at all time uh, but um, uh, I just wanted to demonstrate what are gonna be the problems um, of having these kind of pictures uh, with a mixed uh, part in focus and part out of focus because like here because um, uh, especially in the beginning this is the kind of result that you might gonna get so to avoid this again uh, I recommend using a digital camera on with manual settings and sh set the shutter speed uh, as long as possible so uh, you will probably need to have a stand for your camera uh, in order to get uh, sharpest the sharpest uh, uh, possible image um, and another thing try to get uh, kind of the same exposure uh, the same uh, brightness throughout the entire um, set of pictures because if you have pictures that they are uh, really bright and some pictures from other angle they're really dark uh, that's uh, is gonna cause problems uh, later so try to get uh, so overall the the three rules are uh, take as between 50 and 100 pictures from as many angles as you can uh, try to get your subject in focus all the time avoid uh, strong depth of field and um, try to get the same um, same exposure same brightness uh, for all the picture across all the pictures uh, so this is uh, if, if you can't if you cannot get the pictures to look uh, all the same you can always import them into Photoshop or uh, Lightwave and try to adjust the exposure there and uh, play with the highlights and shadows to get um, 
your subject uh, pretty much uh, always uh, uniforming or uniformingly lit um, and so let's uh, move on f to photo scan and I'm gonna show you uh, how to set up uh, the software and what uh, what to do for generating our model alright so this is uh, Edgisoft photo scan interface uh, when you launch the program this is what it will be presented to you now first thing we need to do is importing our photos so uh, here's the folder I'm gonna select all of the pictures I have 99 uh, pictures here and I'm gonna drag them in here now um, there's a warning here and it says that images with different orientations are added to the project but it's strongly recommended to disable auto rotation in the camera or photo processing software what it means is um, as you can see I have uh, mixed uh, uh, pictures of uh, some uh, some of the pictures are horizontal some are vertical and what uh, PhotoScan is saying is try to avoid that as much as possible I'm gonna click OK um, in my experience uh, it doesn't do too much of a difference but um, if you can uh, try to keep uh, all the photos uh, of the same orientation uh, PhotoScan is happier that way now uh, let's start so these are our uh, imported pictures here so the first thing we want to do we're gonna go here to workflow and we have uh, two options so one is to uh, use uh, these steps one by one or we can go to batch process and do the steps uh, one after the other um, in this case uh, just to guide you through each one of the steps I'm gonna do uh, one by one so I'm gonna go here and click align photos now these are the uh, options for this uh, first step and what I'd like to do I'm gonna set this to high and I'm gonna leave uh, the other parameters to uh, the default settings and I'm gonna click OK now uh, what this will do uh, PhotoScan will go through all the pictures and basically will analyze them and uh, it will try to align them and figure out where each individual photo were in space in the physical space so uh, this is very important uh, this step uh, will basically set the base for a successful or unsuccessful uh, scan photogrammetry scan so this is gonna take a uh, few minutes so I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna come back when it's done alright uh, the process has finished and this is what I've got so if I move this around as you can see uh, each one of these uh, blue rectangle is represents uh, these uh, each one of these pictures so uh, if I uh, click on the images here you can see that for example this one now lights up uh, if I click here this one lights up and so on and so forth so uh, PhotoScan went through and recognized uh, each and every one of the pictures that um, uh, I took and uh, placed them in space in the physical space and now if I want to hide them I'm gonna select this camera icon here I'm gonna click it this will hide uh, the camera display it might be in the way and also another thing you might want to remove is this uh, orb in the middle uh, to do that uh, you just go to view and show items 
and then remove the trackball there we go so now it's gone now this if I zoom in as you can see this is a point cloud um, this point cloud uh, represents all the points that Photoscan uh, was able to identify in space uh, from our pictures so uh, the more point you have the better result you're gonna get uh, as you can see uh, there's a lot of point here on the side which is great but um, it seems that uh, the point here uh, on the head uh, especially on top of the head there are very few points and that's probably because uh, I didn't really have too many pictures of the top of the head uh, I only have that one that was completely out of focus like uh, I believe this one uh, if you remember so uh, Photoscan uh, didn't have enough information there to be able to recreate correctly that area and as well as the back of the feet it seems like uh, there weren't too many pictures of uh, the back of the legs and feet so as you can see uh, this might be an area that probably is not going to be uh, very good uh, in the uh, geometry reconstruction pass uh, you can see here this is the point counts so this is uh, 66,000 which is not too bad uh, ideally you want to have at least uh, I would say between 50,000 uh, and uh, I mean at least 50,000 points um, so 66 is it's okay uh, if you have 100,000 or more uh, that's even better obviously the more points you have here uh, the more uh, clean scan you're gonna get um, now uh, you might notice that there is this uh, uh, cage around the object here and this is gonna determine the area where Photoscan is gonna go and reconstruct the geometry so uh, we might want to uh, change this a little bit so to change that we're gonna move here to this icon here it says rotate region and we're gonna click it and now there's this uh, it's a little bit difficult to see but there's this little gizmo that uh, uh, show up in the middle so we can just click and start dragging this guy around and um, what I want is basically to encapsule uh, the entire dinosaurs so you can see I have these points here I can click and drag them on the top like so and I'm gonna drag this guy down a little bit because uh, the tail uh, is gonna go lower compared to the feet and I'm gonna also move these guys a little bit back like so so I'm gonna include let's do like this so I'm gonna include the whole tail and let's see from the top maybe let's let's just align this with our box um, so I'm just gonna rotate it like so it's not um, it's not mandatory to do this uh, you just need to make sure that uh, your entire model is encapsulated in this um, in this area in this box otherwise um, uh, the the part outside the box is not going to be uh, generated in 3d um, so that's uh, I think that's good now next step well first of all let's save this so I'm gonna go and save it out and uh, I already made a folder called photoscan I'm just gonna call this uh, dinosaur uh, zero one uh, I mean I don't think I'm gonna need more than one but let's save it like this alright 
Now, the next step we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna move back to workflow and click on build dense cloud. This is the second step. And again, I'm gonna leave uh, the parameters like this. So quality, I'm gonna set to high and deep filtering, I'm gonna leave it to aggressive and I'm gonna click OK. So uh, uh, this is another process that uh, is gonna take quite uh, some times. And um, again, I'm gonna post the video and come back when it's done. All right, I'm back. Um, this step took about uh, 45 minutes, so that was uh, quite long. Uh, and uh, at the moment, nothing visually have changed, but um, this step serves uh, mainly to the creation of the mesh. So if we're gonna click here now, build mesh, uh, the source data is the dense cloud that we just um, uh, generated and surface type I'm gonna keep it arbitrary and I'm gonna leave the other parameters like this um, face count it says 4 million polygons which is uh, more than enough for this and I'm gonna click OK and now basically uh, Photoscan is uh, generating the mesh based on the um, uh, the previous step uh, that we uh, created so uh, this should be uh, a little bit faster but um, again uh, it's just kind of boring to just uh, stare this uh, progress bar so once again I'm gonna uh, pause the video alright and here we have our uh, generated mesh so uh, as you can see it did a pretty decent job uh, in on the body here um, and the face is better than I thought considering that uh, we didn't really have uh, many points in there there's gonna be a little bit of cleanup uh, here to do of course but um, overall this uh, came out uh, quite nice and uh, the end of the tail is missing but that's not a big deal and I'm actually pretty happy on how this uh, came out it looks quite good and quite detailed and there is one last step uh, that we need to do and that is uh, generating the texture although at this stage uh, it's actually um, not uh, necessary but I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna uh, show you how to do it so uh, this should take a uh, couple of minutes so let's uh, go to workflow and click on build texture now uh, for the f this first uh, first generated model here we're just gonna go and um, mapping mode is gonna be generic um, once we will have our retopologized uh, mesh we will come back here and do again a mapping mode using uh, the um, UVs from the model but for now uh, generic is fine and textures uh, let's do a 4k texture and um, I'm just gonna click OK so this will take uh, all the photographs and it's gonna project uh, a little bit of the texture uh, from this photograph to the uh, model and then it's gonna blend them together um, this is just again this step at this stage is not really necessary because uh, we're gonna have to export the model in ZBrush uh, clean it up 
and uh, retopologize, make proper UVs, etc. Um, but uh, just to show you um, how it's done uh, for this uh, stage here, uh, just to have an idea, and um, uh, also just to to see how fast it is. This is uh, only gonna take basically uh, a minute or so, slightly more than a minute. So as you can see just a minute has passed and uh, this should do the second pass should be uh, fairly quick and so this let's see okay it said blending texture is gonna take five minutes um, it's probably gonna be much faster than that um, as you can see the scroll bar is going quite fast uh, but let's again wait until this is finished and then I'll come back alright that's done and uh, as you can see uh, uh, Photoscan have uh, projected uh, the pictures as and he has generated this uh, texture which um, uh, it's not great at the moment he has um, some uh, some areas look blurred compared to others but uh, for now that's fine um, so yeah this uh, I'm pretty happy uh, it came out quite nicely and I'm gonna just show you now uh, a few uh, display mode that you can uh, check your model into so as you can see now I have this icon uh, that it's turned on this is the texture view uh, if I uh, click this icon here this one is the shaded view so what you see here it's the vertex color of this mesh and uh, what if I click here this is actually the raw mesh this is the un uh, with the color uh, vertex color turned off so you can check you can zoom in and you can see uh, the polygons here and uh, let's check exactly you can see the this is uh, quite useful to have a good look at what kind of um, surface did we get so this part here it's very very good and we're gonna need to do some cleanup here uh, for the back of the legs um, the tail uh, a little bit cleaning up a little bit of the hand uh, the inside of the mouth and the top of the head uh, but uh, overall considering uh, how uh, low quality and um, not really uh, good pictures I had in the beginning I would say that this is a fantastic result uh, I'm very happy with it so oh and one more this is the uh, wireframe view uh, if I zoom you can see how dense uh, this mesh actually is uh, at the moment I have uh, 4 million vertices and um, so let's go back to our texture view okay so uh, it looks uh, quite good now I'm gonna go and click uh, save so I'm gonna save this uh, result so I'm not gonna lose it and uh, there's gonna be uh, a bunch of things that we need to do to clean up this model and first of all let's export it so we can open it in ZBrush so let's go to uh, file uh, export model and I'm gonna call this uh, dinosaur underscore uh, photoscan dot obj so I'm gonna click save and for now I'm just gonna export this the, the generated texture as uh, JPEG is just for reference um, uh, again uh, later 
uh, in this uh, process we're gonna go back here and regenerate the texture uh, over the um, uh, the retopologized model that we're gonna make uh, but for now since we're gonna import it in ZBrush um, we're gonna use the texture as it is um, so that's it so uh, we've done it uh, what we needed to do with a uh, photo scan is done so let's check out how the model looks in ZBrush all right here's in ZBrush so let's uh, import our model and I go to edit mode and yeah it looks uh, pretty good um, as you can see uh, clearly uh, we're gonna have to do some uh, cleanup there but uh, overall uh, the scan came out um, pretty decent uh, let's, uh, let's check with the map cap gray uh, came out pretty decent and uh, one thing that I want to point out is that um, since this model here is gonna be needed to import back again into Photoscan uh, later on um, it is necessary to keep this exact orientation if I move it on top you can see that um, it's not uh, this model is not um, aligned with the uh, with the axis if I snap it if I, by holding shift if I snap it uh, to the top view like this you can see that it's uh, rotated like so um, it uh, we're gonna need to keep this guy with this orientation and um, uh, you will understand that why uh, later in uh, this video series but uh, for now uh, just trust me um, so we're gonna have to uh, keep it with this orientation and uh, from uh, let's uh, forgot let's import the texture um, I'm gonna show you how the texture looks like uh, so let's go here photo scan and this uh, mass here it's the texture that photo scan has uh, generated I can go 100% so this is a uh, automatically generated uh, texture as you can see it's looks uh, really messy this is not really usable for anything but for now this is just for us to have something to apply um, at our in our uh, model here if we want so if I click import bring my texture flip the V and if we go to texture map I can just assign this texture and here it is so if we go to here here's our uh, fantastic uh, toy dinosaurs uh, imported into ZBrush which uh, is uh, really really cool so in the next video uh, I'm gonna show you how to clean up this scan we're gonna go through the process of cleaning this up and uh, I hope uh, this first uh, video was informative and I see you guys in the next video thank you for watching the full video if you want you can support me on patreon subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch my latest video and other videos in my playlist See you the next time.